God, Jesse Benton's a mole. He was in there from the beginning to take Ron Paul down and help the New World Order. Welcome to the Lions of Liberty podcast. Here is your host, your guide, your shining beacon of liberty, Mark Clare. All right, welcome back. We are here at the Lions of Liberty podcast, as the man with the great radio voice just told you, and this is episode number 95. Before we get into today's show, I want to take a second to let you know about Health Excellence Select, an amazing alternative to Obamacare, which utilizes health sharing to cover your medical costs. That's Health Excellence Select. For more information, head on over to lionsofliberty.com slash health. This is, of course, no ordinary episode. It's the second edition of our feature, Rand Paul Lusses. And Minuses. Rand Paul Lusses and Minuses. And what an appropriate week to be bringing back this feature. Of course, Rand Paul just announced her president this week. And to take us on this little journey, I have, of course, the author of the weekly Rand Paul Lusses and Minus column, Mr. Brian McWilliams, Lions Liberty co-founder, a resident Rand Paul ranter. How are you doing? Hello. Doing wonderful. What a momentous occasion it is. I, uh, I think, you know, we're talking about the fact that Rand is, is official now. He's bona fide, as he's, they say in some He's certified. Circles. Yeah. <laughs> he's got his paperwork work in. He's crossed his T's and dotted his I's. Yep. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's in the race. Not like the false alarm that was uh, thrown out there earlier where they said he had registered for uh, the president but didn't actually happen. What would you do if, after all this, you started this weekly column, uh, Rand Paul Lusses and Minuses, over at LionsLiberty.com, which you can now find every Tuesday. We've done a little shuffling, so look for it every single Tuesday. Give us some time to uh, digest the news from the weekend and uh, you know bring you the proper liberty perspective and not, and not be rushed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that's important. Um, but yeah, Rand is officially announced for president. And uh, yeah, well, so what would you do if he if he had just said, actually, no, I'm not, I'm not running for president. Well, you, you build this article. We're doing this web, this series of podcasts. <laughs> what would we do? We just, we just keep doing this, or I think so for the next four years until he announced next time. We'll just really keep it. Yeah, you just really double down on it. Hey, once you start something, you got to continue through to the end. This is the end. You know, just like in the Iraq War, just like Afghanistan, huh? Stick it to the end. Nothing ever happened bad doing that. Uh, you sound like you're, you're getting ready to speech right for Jeb Bush right now. <laughs> or Rand Paul, depending on For, for on John how Ellis Bush Bush. That is his complete name. <laughs> Everybody, look that up. Fans his of the fat- show will know we've talked about that before. Yes, yeah, Texas' first Latino uh, governor. Is that what his statement was that he's getting roasted for right now? Uh, I don't know. I don't follow Latino politics <laughs> as closely as you do. <laughs> well, they, you know, like we won't get into it too much, but he had just said that he'd, he registered to vote as a, a Hispanic. Oh, yeah, I did, and I did they see roast that. Yeah. Him and he had like said he was a Latino. And well, it's like, it, what? It's Bush. Yeah, Bush. How do you say Bush in Spanish? It's Bush. Bush. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's an old crappy joke from a, from a past edition of Libertarians in Living Rooms Drinking Liquor, which you can, of course, find at our archive lionsofliberty.com slash podcast for all the past episodes, including past episodes of this show, which you can also find while we're plugging everything at lionsofliberty.com slash rand for the full series of Rand Paul Lusses and Minuses and this podcast as well. So we make things easy for you Uh over at lionsofliberty.com. At least we try. So yeah, the obvious thing to talk about is this presidential announcement. So, you know, as you know, we like to hand out Paul Lusses. If Rand does, old Randy Pants does a good job. Randy Pants. Remember, we're trying it. to get this hashtag going, Randy Pants. So help us out, uh, especially with the, the race picking up. I think we can actually get some traction on this thing, get this puppy trending. So, uh, yeah, hashtag Randy Pants whenever you talk about Rand, whenever you tweet to us. We'd appreciate it. Hopefully there's not somebody named, you know, hashtag Randy Pants that's been doing some sort of bizarre online videos that it's going to be hashtag going to be like, I'm so popular these days. And, I don't know how to do it. And obviously you talked about this in this week's uh, column already, but well, why don't we just talk about the presidential announcement itself? The fact that he is officially running for president. We've talked about this ad nauseum on so many episodes of this show. But what would you give just the very idea that Rand is running for president? Is that a Paul Us or a it's minus a, it's, situation? It's a Paul Us. I mean, hell, the guy's putting it out there. When's there going to be a better time for him? You know, as we discussed in the past, there were various, um, sometimes minuses. 
Rand, uh, I think the faster he can act, the faster he can get in there, you know, put his name out for president, get it out, have a good campaign, and possibly get elected, the better. Because uh, as we've seen in the past, the longer he talks about things, the worse he does. So I say move fast. There's no point in waiting another four years to try to do this thing because uh, you're just going to see more cracks in the armor there. What's that slogan? Uh, Rand Paul, one sentence earlier? Yes, that's a campaign slogan. Jesse Benton, if you're listening in, uh, Rand Paul, one sentence earlier. Rand Paul, one sentence earlier. Well, we know Always Jesse Benton to... listens to the show. Oh, of that's course he does. He's a big fan of uh, Libertarians and Living Rooms Drinking Liquor, I heard. He likes to drink uh, a nice Kentucky bourbon while he listens. That's right. Drinking alone, just like the rest of us like to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. The only time we, we drink together is when we record our show. So you would give that a Paul Us. Oh, yeah. See? Official Paul Us. And, uh, you know, I've had my criticisms of Dr. Paul in the past. Uh, I don't agree with every word out of his mouth. There's a lot of things I disagree with him on. But at the end of the day, you know, I mean, here's a guy who was on the Bill Maher show saying it's time to end the war on drugs. Here's a guy who's, I mean, it's not a sexy issue, but who else is to makes a, a political campaign out of the Export-Import Bank? I mean, right. it's not a sexy issue at all, but it's a total crony capitalist institution. All these major corporations go to this bank and get these loans they couldn't get on the free market, and they're subsidized by us. Why should that even exist? Right. Um, and, of course, rec- up until recently, he was also the guy advocating for a real, you know, cutting the budget and uh, it being very conservative in our foreign policy and empire building. Of course, I say... Up until recently, because uh, if you've read my my previous column, uh, I ran pluses and minuses, you know that I gave him a, a big old minus because he introduced a bill and uh, Rand proposed a defense spending bill that would actually increase the defense spending budget by some 76. We will get to that in one second, but first I have ah. to give my, I didn't give my official Paul Us. Oh, What's sorry. the point of doing the show if right, I don't get my go grades go in? So yeah, I will also give Rand running for president a Paul Us. Because he is pushing issues forward still, that and he's going to be the most prominent figure pushing issues like the war on drugs or curtailing the war on drugs, curtailing police militarization. Even if I don't agree with everything he says on foreign policy, he certainly seems to approach things in a much more reasonable, level-headed manner than I think a lot of the politicians out there, even even the other neocons that he might coddle to he doesn't seem he's not the the bloodthirsty john mccain type he's he's a little more restrained although he did sign that tom cotton letter which i believe i got him a minus from both get him a minus that's right but yeah let's move on to this it's ironic that Rand is announcing this week in what his his worst week ever over at Rand paul is in minuses last week anyway this past week so why don't we talk about a few of the things that you, uh, you three issues you had with Rand last week, and one of them is his defense spending proposal. So tell us a little bit about well, this. So basically, Rand proposed his his own version of this bill, and it's so confusing because he had been saying, you know, cut the budget, cut defense spending, bring the troops home, you know, d- stop all this this empire building interfering with people's foreign policies, and you know, defund people as far as the amount of foreign aid we give, even. And then he goes puts forth this this bill, which is actually going to increase the budget by about $76 billion. And, uh, you know, he says, okay, well, I, I off-put it by, you know, I'm, I'm doing some cuts here and there and, and certain things like education and certain other programs. But the thing is, I don't want offsetting cuts when there's, you know, an increase in defense budget, which means an increase in American lives loss, which means an increase in the military-industrial complex and all these other, you know, cascade of issues that, that accompany it, including blowback, <laughs> <laughs> Since we're going, we're going to use those bombs on something. And, you know, it's like we're increasing it. Great. You got cuts. But I want an actual reduction in these things. So you don't buy the argument that his defenders, I know, like the people, some people over at Rare were saying that, you know, it's a genius move because, yeah, he's increasing the defense budget so he can please the hawk type people. But he's lowering spending overall because it's, it's, he's, he's cutting so much from foreign aid. So it is he does actually amount to an overall decrease. And it just goes with his sort of idea that if we are going to be spending this money, it should be spent on actual defense, not on sending it over to dictators and, and that stuff overseas. So but you don't buy into uh, that argument, I guess. No, not really i mean i look i agree with with cutting foreign aid i agree with cutting a lot of the things that he wants to cut but i just think if you're gonna if you're pushing it back into defense it's clearly you know it's clearly cuddling up to people it's clearly up to certain you know war hawks and neocons and it goes against everything he was saying previously about cutting the amount of money we're spending on defense and, and actually using money for defense rather than aggressive tactics which is what we do now i mean all this money is going to be put to use for you know by i'm guessing it's going to be more actions in the middle east it's going to be 
uh, more aid to Israel, which Rand is in favor of, oddly enough, uh, as we've seen in the past. So I don't buy it. I, I, I think it's it's a an exercise in currying favor that is, in the end, not really gaining us much. Especially when we know what a kind of crony capitalist institution the Pentagon is at doling out money to all these companies that get no bid contracts and all this equipment that we just keep producing and producing and then they have to go lobby for military action overseas Mm -hmm. because we need to use it on something or else there's no reason to place more orders for this stuff. So to see him putting more money towards that entire thing when we already have the most, you know, absolutely enormous military, most overbloated budget in the world Mm -hmm. is a little uh, disconcerting, even when he is calling for cuts elsewhere, which I I agree with those cuts as well. I don't think we should be handing money out to other dictators, other bad governments overseas when uh, we have enough problems with our own. You mentioned crony capitalism, military industrial complex. But let's not forget that Rand is from Kentucky, and there is a lot of large missile manufacturers in dun, Kentucky. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. I believe the Tomahawk missiles are, are made you, right are there you in Kentucky. Accusing Rand of perhaps currying favor with um, the constituency of Kentucky, the I money that, that might be I there. I think he might be. I think he might be uh, tossing a little a little coin Just in the way about. of the. The middle manufacturers. It's this thing where he tries to please both sides again because he is giving overall cuts so he can really please the sort of, you know, really slash the budget people. But at the same time, he can say, hey, but I'm bringing more money to our defense contractors and to our so our overall defense of the United States. So it's a uh, maybe some would call it a genius move. Others might say it's just going to piss everyone off, which right, that's... <laughs> is also <laughs> often what seems to happen with old hashtag Randy, Randy pants. pants. I think you have to say hashtag before it to get people to Agreed. actually hashtag it. So uh, so I guess uh, that would be a uh, minus. That's a minus. Yeah. That's a minus. And um, oh man, I, yeah, I'm going to give him a minus too. What am I talking about? I was almost soft on him, but why should I be? Yeah, exactly. There's no reason. There, there's plenty of time to praise him. He says a lot of good stuff. So, um, I'm sure in the future he'll get more Paul losses, but... He now. might. be. also, as we said, Rand Paul, one sentence earlier. Rand Paul, one sentence earlier. As he's interviewed more, as he's giving... You know, his speeches this are always great. They're, his speeches are typically on point, And he doesn't get into too much trouble talking about, you know, the negative aspects. But, I don't know, as, he, as he's interviewed more, I, I worry that more and more he's going to get foot and mouth disease. So. Foot and mouth disease. Yeah. All right, well, speaking of which, why don't we talk a little bit more about his tough week with you last week here, and uh, that was his statement regarding that the the claim that America is in a quote-unquote moral crisis regarding gay marriage. Mm. Now, what what did Rand actually say here? What Why is he keep coming back to this issue? I mean, obviously people ask him about it, and it's a hot-button topic, so of course it's going to come up, but why does he always have to bring this sort of moral agenda into things, even when if you actually just look at his policies there, he, when, you know, he's really in favor of private contracts. He, he doesn't want to have government pass rules against gay marriage. So he's really pro-gay marriage policy-wise on the surface. And yet he says all this stuff that is only going to rub people that are in gay relationships are sort of sympathetic to that cause in the wrong way. So, yeah. Well, let's, so hear, let's, hear, here? let's hear what he had to say real quick. Don't always look to Washington to solve anything. Yeah. And in fact, uh, the moral crisis we have in our country, there, are, there is a role for us trying to figure out things like marriage. There's also a moral crisis that uh, allows people to think that there would be some sort of other marriage. And so uh, there, it really there's a role uh, outside and inside government. But uh, I think the, the exhortation to try to change people's thoughts also has to come from, from the countryside, from, from everywhere outside of Washington. In fact, we're the most disconnected city on the planet from the people, you know. So don't have a lot of faith in what's going on up here. Doesn't mean don't participate with us up here and try to make it better, definitely do. But realize, uh, like every other problem, that, you know, I think, you know, I, I've said this before, we need a revival in the country, mm. you know. Yeah. We, we need uh, uh, another great awakening with yes. uh, tent revivals of thousands <laughs> of people saying, you know, reform or you know, see what's going to happen if we don't mm. reform. So, as, as you heard, uh, Rand comes out pretty strongly and, uh, you know, proclaims the fact that we are in a moral crisis and that he calls for... <laughs> And we're both kind of laughing at the end of that for big tent revivals to come through. And uh, he wants, you know, the hooting and hollering and he wants the tents and the preachers and getting everybody all riled up, uh, presumably for Jesus. The hooting and the hollering. The hooting and the hollering for Jeebus. 
Uh, no offense to anybody who is a practicing uh, who, Christian and Catholic Hollers or hoots and hollers for Jesus like you're entitled nice. to. Hoot and holler wherever you want. But... Uh, to say that we're in a moral crisis because that should be people... one of his campaign slogans. Rand Paul, you can hoot and holler forever you want for whoever you want. <laughs> just don't call it marriage. Yeah, just don't call it marriage. But yeah, it's like, look, these people aren't hurting anybody. They want to get married. Why can't they get married? And don't say it's a moral crisis for them to want to do that, especially when you said that you're fine with people getting contracts, you know, having independent contracts between themselves to take care of it. It's just something that it just strikes me as so unnecessary to go into. And I, granted, I know he was at a prayer breakfast. But it's something where I think you could couch it better, especially if you know you're being taped. And we Does st- he know he's being taped? Have we determined that? Has anyone? <laughs> I, I think he's got to know. I mean, it's, unless it doesn't look like a cell phone camera on the video. No, it looks like I, it's a pretty straightforward. I, of course, know that Rand Paul is aware of modern technology and its use. Well, he, it seems like political. sometimes he ain't. Maybe he's not. So anyway, I just I, it's very off-putting. It's something that is going to keep coming up. Especially now that he has announced his presidency or his candidacy for president, and people are going to keep asking about it. And I, and unless he figures out his messaging and really works out about how he can say what he, you know, say what he thinks without coming across as being a real bigot, uh, it's going to be it's going to be a problem, and it, it, you know, it's something that could really tank his his chances. Yeah, and I feel like this one issue is going to keep so many people that should agree with him on everything and probably do agree with him on so many things away. And that's unfortunate. But mm-hmm. I mean, I know, you know how political debates go out here in California. Some uh, progressive leaning type people have certain pet issues. And if they don't hear what they want to hear, it's over. And, you know, I mean, that's that's probably a deeper problem with how we think about politics and how we think about these issues. But it's true. And he's made great headway with his stance on marijuana legalization with his he always talks about race and how mandatory minimums affect you know affect minorities disproportionately and he, he says a lot of great stuff that that may as well be coming from like like ralph nader i mean he, he can, can sound that far to what you perceive as the left sometimes and then he says stuff like this and he sounds like pat robertson right and you're just like who is this guy so um yeah, I mean, to me, it's I think it's dumb stuff to say. It doesn't like upset me that much because I think he's just saying what he thinks, and it's and it's not affecting what he believes about gay marriage policy wise. But it's so unnecessary and just yeah, minus minus. Yeah, uh, like minus. you said, from a policy standpoint, yeah, it's fine. It's just his personal opinion. But you know, I mean, look, it, it's it, people are looking at this guy. He's going to be president, and he and we're going to get into another topic as this this third thing comes up too. I don't make this point, but. You know, people still have strong memories of George Bush, George W., in office talking about how God told him to do this and God told him to do that. Now, George, you didn't finish your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And it rings with people, especially independents, especially people that might be on the more progressive side of things that look at Obama and say, oh, God, and now Hillary Clinton's coming up the war hawk and might want to look for another alternative. And then you got Rand up there talking about how we're in a moral crisis that we need a rival and the hooting and the hollering. Yeah, it doesn't bode well for him. All right, and um, so let's talk about that last thing there that you were sort of referencing, and I presume that is Rand's book coming up, which is entitled Presidents and Their Prayers. Yeah. How lovely. Uh, it's one of two books he's got coming. He's also got one called Taking a Stand, Moving Beyond Partisan Politics to Unite America, Doing bookstores May twenty sixth. Yeah, which that's a great title. That's a great. Rand right, Paul. One book earlier. One book earlier. <laughs> one book earlier. One book earlier. Yeah, he has, He always has a. You know, he gets one book title, and then three months later, he's got to come out with the Our Presidents and Their Prayers, right. Proclamations of Faith by America's Leaders. Right. And this one's clearly catering to the the G Dub crowd. Right? Oh, totally. I mean, I mean, no come on. You look at it, it. It's like here we go. Religious right. You know, he reaches out both hands and he opens a book in them. You know, here you go. Presidents and their prayers. How how faith impacted the way presidents govern. Which which is, you know, something in a way, look, everybody's got their personal beliefs, whether you believe in God or, or the universe or whatever. Your talking dog told you to do something. But it's just, again, to put it out there so just, look, God's got a, you know, pr- people are praying and God's got a mission and, and I'm going to do it. And that's what's inspiring me. It makes people think of Bush and now you know, gets involved in the Iraq war. And it's, I mean, to me, it's, it really grates on me, uh, personally, just because I can see him going so far in one direction that it, uh, to me, is off-putting. So does he get just a minus here, or does he get a plus for the other book? <laughs> you know, the, I mean, the other book is fantastic. Uh, taking a stand, making, you know, beyond partisan politics, because he is great at that. You know, we've talked about this. It, it, look at all the people. Yeah, I mean, he's got that with. bill with Cory Booker yep. to, to push a marijuana legalization yeah, on the federal Gilbrand, level. Yeah. 
Yeah. He really makes an effort to, to, you know, reach across the aisle, which is incredibly laudable. But then he, you know, releases this thing, which is just so pandering. I mean, in a sense, it's harmless. It's more like a historical look. It's not even, I mean, at least how they describe it. Rand Paul reveals the practices of each president of the United States and sheds light on how religion played a part in their governing and personal lives. Uh, That's where it worries me. Part of their governing, you know, the separation of church and state. But as we've already seen, you know, Rand's not insisting that marriage is defined by, uh, you know, the church's doctrine necessarily. He believes in the private contracts, which is good. But uh, you can see how it's going to leak in. Hey, the the guy likes to go read a silly book. That's okay. <laughs> but, you know, he, in a way I get it. It's like he needs to reach out to the evangelical vote and show that he's a religious man. And, I mean, I guess he's doing that. But it's like over so- and over and over and over right. again he's doing it, though. That's It's like, come on, man. You know, you're you're losing. I don't know how many libertarians are religious. I, I, I honestly don't. I think it Maybe we should poll our readers. Yeah. But, you know, it's, if you're religious, like this post, it just is something that, it. the more you hear about when you really are doing the Bible thumping, you know, it just harkens back to all these conservative mainstream dyed in the wool GOP neocons. And that's what people hate. You know, they hear that and they immediately it, it gets a negative reaction from them. I mean, he's a senator and he's running for president. So what I want to know is what he thinks the role of government is. What I want to know is what he thinks justice is. What he thinks, um, you know, what his political philosophy is. And that's what I can never get a completely clear picture of with Rand. And that's what yeah. bothers me more than the fact that he talks about the prayers and stuff like that. But, you know, it's all part of the package that Randy Pants is putting together for us here. Hashtag Randy Pants. <laughs> So, yeah, that was his rough week last week. Was that it the first time last week? That was the first he time he got clean, all negative. Yeah, all minuses. minuses. Yeah, three minuses. Randy Pants. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. yep. All right, Brian, we got just a couple more Randy Pants items to check off the list here. But first, we, of course, have to take a minute to give a little love to our sponsors at Health Excellence Select. Now, until last year, I was just like you guys. I saw my health insurance cost double and my deductible skyrocket thanks to the Obamacare health insurance mandates. Determined not to participate in this corporatist scheme, I sought an alternative and found out about health sharing, a fantastic concept in which your monthly fees go directly to pay the medical bills of others, not into the pockets of some crony capitalist fat cat. Health Excellence Select combines health sharing with a patient care personal assistant, 24-7 phone access to board-certified physicians, and discounts on dental, vision, and other benefits. The best part is that for most people, plans with Health Excellence Select are much more affordable than Obamacare insurance, and it meets the legal mandate, so you will not be fined for using it in lieu of insurance. For more information, head on over to lionsofliberty.com slash health. Should, now, we, should we go backwards in time, or should we talk about the, the more your, this week? I think this let's past talk about column. let's talk about this past week's column, okay? Because it had some it had some good. Because he's, he's, he's clearly he's picking up the um, he's picking up the political stuff here. I'd say, like in terms of his his alliances are becoming more clear, his positions are becoming more re- defined. I guess you would say. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is one I, I don't think you wrote about, but I, I, I want to talk about this article that I saw. Basically, it's from the National Journal, and it says, Rand Paul taps House GOP's troublemakers to boost 2016 campaign. And it goes and talks about how he's expecting to have all these sort of endorsements and sort of surrogates working with him throughout the campaign, including Justin Amash from Michigan, Thomas Massey, also from Kentucky, Raul Labrador, who I'm not that familiar with, but I love the name and think he should have uh, some sort of cartoon (laughs) series about himself, and uh, Mark Sanford of Carolina, who had the affair with a Brazilian woman, I believe. And, but he's back, and, and besides, that seems like a pretty good guy. So, um, you know, it's an interesting uh, sort of group he's putting together, and um, these are all guys that have uh, some level of credence with libertarians, with um, sort of small government Republican types. I think most of them are seen as fairly serious. None of them are seen as neocon kind of big government, um, what do they call uh, Republicans in disguise? Uh, rhinos! That's the word I'm looking oh. for, right? I don't Republican know. in name I, only. I, I don't think I've yeah. ever uh, heard that. Well, Interesting. That, then you don't know anything i, I, I barely don't <laughs> and then um but and then this is and this you mentioned this past week he also got the endorsement or at least it's being reported that he will get the endorsement of jc watts jc watts yeah who's jc watts why should i care jc watts well jc watts is one of the few 
black conservative congressman out there. He was a Republican uh, congressman, and I believe from Oklahoma. And he, uh, you know, he was one really outspoken about the need for the GOP to actually embrace the black community, reach out to them more and try to win some of those votes back and, and explain why a conservative viewpoint does appeal to minority cultures. Because the Democrats, I think, got something like 97 percent of the vote. Now, granted, there was a black president, but even when there's a white president or a white candidate, they're still just dominating that uh, that those political lines. And it's not always, you know, it, it doesn't make sense that an entire people just automatically believe something and it's because the GOP has not made a lot of efforts to reach out to them except Rand has he certainly has and he's given a lot of speeches at like uh, black colleges and yeah, stuff like yeah. that many of which have, have gone over well um, what I'm more interested in talking about is did you know that J.C. Watts used to play in the Canadian Football League <laughs> I did not. For what team? Uh, it doesn't say. Uh, Wikipedia doesn't go, go to that kind of now level defunct. of detail. The Ottawa Rough Riders. He did play in college for the Oklahoma Sooners as a quarterback. Yeah, that I knew. Yeah, that and, I knew. Uh, I think so do you the think? Heisman? No. Do you think that Rand is going after the CFL fan vote, the coveted CFL vote? Of, <laughs> Clearly, I think Northern uh, Minnesota. There the are many fans. Seventeen to eighteen Maine. I think there's three fans Americans that that religiously follow the CFL. I think he will probably throw in with Rand for many reasons. So, yeah, I think he's got the locked in. Take that, Hillary. <laughs> All right, so that's J.C. Watts. So he's really lining people up. He's not messing around. He's getting names, I mean, behind him. I remember when, when Ron Paul was running Everett, you'd always see all these posts like, when's this guy going to endorse Ron Paul? When's that going to endorse? And like, nobody really. Nobody. <laughs> nobody prominent would really endorse Ron Paul. No, so, he, was, he was too too much out there on the fringe. And he's he's seen as too much of a, you know, a political, I, I don't know, what's the word? Uh, or other? Political cancer? cancer? Yeah, I think the is, the, is no exactly what you're looking for those people, yeah. But, yeah, there's a lot of people endorsing Rand, and, um, again, well, kudos to Rand. He's, he's, it, sh- it not only shows you the, the strides he's made in making himself palatable to the good and the bad of it. You know, we gave him a lot of, a lot of you-know-what because of some of the moves he's made, but clearly— I don't know has, what. What did we give him? Uh, well, Chocolate? Just, Yes, we sent him a box of chocolates. Okay. No, but you know, like just for these reasons, like the defense, the defense budget. Um, you know, we give him flack for it, but we um, we obviously acknowledge the fact that that is helping him to curry favor with some of these these more conservative mainstreamers. Although not that it mashes, but you know, you'll, you're going to see a lot more people coming out. And of course, Mitch McConnell and he might share a bed at times. I don't even know, but they are. Whoa, um, that's a might, that's a lofty accusation. Yeah, for this one show. Yeah, so, you're actually accusing um, Strand and Mitch fellows. of like a David Bowie Mick Jagger situation. I think uh, they might know where the Oval Office's secret bedroom is. Okay, all right. Um, so we are, of course, joking, folks. There are no unsubstantiated reports. Though. No, no, no. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, of course not. No, no, no. Uh, but they but are... if they did, that would be quite the moral crisis. Yes, it would. Ooh, ooh. Speaking of, uh, you know, just, I was going to say, maybe, maybe Rand will make McConnell his VP. Uh, oh, God, he wouldn't. Do we want to get into the who's going to be Rand's VP conversation, or do we want to stick to the facts here in this podcast? We don't need to stick to facts. I haven't. I, facts are boring. Who do you think? Wild speculation even... is much more yeah, interesting. I, who do you think he would? He would. Uh, well, I'll toss one out there. J.C. Watts. Watts. I was just going to say, it makes perfect sense if he actually reached out to J.C. Watts as his VP. You know, he's on board. Definitely better than Mitch McConnell. Yeah. Maybe Jesse Benton. (laughs) Oh, God. Yeah, speaking of Jesse, let's talk about Jesse. Oh, so anyway, that was J.C. Watts' big big pull-us. Very nice. I suppose I'll give him a pull-us as well. I, yeah. Only because he played in the Canadian Football League. This is not related to politics at all. Plus, eh? Um, and I feel bad. We just gave him like six minuses. So. Right, yeah. Well, here's one Congrats, that... Congrats, Rand. You got a poll. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jesse Benton. You re- might remember Jesse Benton, as we all do, from his involvement with Ron Paul's campaigns. And, uh, you know, he had, he had run the 2012 campaign for Ron. And he's married to who? Ron, Ron's... I so, believe he's married to Ron Paul's grand granddaughter or grandniece or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we have to Google it. He's married to uh, somebody in facts. the Paul like lineage, so he's he has married into libertarian royalty essentially. <laughs> but he was, you know, obviously he got some some notoriety. He helped Ron Paul become more. He's prominent. married. Jesse Benton is married to Ron Paul's granddaughter Valerie. Valerie. Okay, there you go. There you go. Oh, he's a Philly native. Look at that. Oh, he's, he's got to have he's something in him. McWilliams sees Gallas points. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, so, anyway, he ran ran uh, Ron's campaign, 
and in 2012. And, you know, there were some... It wasn't the best run campaign. I think we could all agree about that. There was some disappointment there uh, in the way it was it was handled and managed. And then he some people have even claimed that Jesse Benton sabotaged. The I've Hulk heard Hulk. that, although I don't. Some people that. like Alex Jones. Yeah, <laughs> Jesse Benton's a mole. He was in there from the beginning to take Ron Paul down and help the New World Order. Ah, that's my Alex Jones. Yeah, I have to wait that once in a while. So. Dead on, man. No, but you know what though? Jesse Benton <laughs> seems to be a mole that was trying to. Uh... What if Alex Jones was Rand Paul's VP? Oh eh? my God! Come on. That would be ridiculous. Fight I would, the New World Order, Rand Paul 2016. I would absolutely love it. His head would explode. That was like Alex Jones trail. Hulk Hogan. No. Uh, but, anyway, Jesse Benton well, then got in bed with McConnell. He ran his campaign for re-election. Jesse Benton's been I gotta in bed stop with saying the, get in bed. I don't know why I, I keep mean, saying that this, today. Hey, if, it, if the shoe fits. If the sheets smell. If the sh- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. Anyway, so then he ran for McConnell, and he said that that uh, he was actually holding his nose the whole time working with McConnell. He was just doing it to help Rand. Interesting. And they did make a, you know, McConnell did aid Rand for the presidency. So now Benton is back working with the Paul camp. He is working for Rand's super PAC. And uh, he's going to be, I guess, making the commercials and putting out the political hit ads and whatever else, uh, which is slightly worrying because, as you wrote about, Mark, a few – God, it's got to be a year ago now. Who, little old me? Little old you. Jesse put out some commercials that were truly terrible, like insultingly stupid and bad that were just straight-up hit pieces, terrible editing, terrible music, terrible graphics, and also put out a piece for Mitch McConnell in which it was uh, inaccurate. He said, I think, Kentucky University or Duke University instead of the other one and mixed it up, and it was a whole big thing. So there's a lot of baggage that comes with Jesse Benton. Uh He's gonna, you know. Did you see that thing where he was wearing like a, a bulletproof vest to address these Ron Paul supporters? What? No. Yeah, it was at the Republican convention. Uh, Google it. Wow. I can Google it. I guess. But <laughs> if you're if you're playing along at home, Google. Uh, let's go to YouTube. Next thing we'll find Jesse out that Jesse Benton was Jesse was responsible for the uh, the readjusting the way the Republican convention worked to screw video. Ron Paul. Jesse Benton wears bulletproof vest at I don't know now. It's what loading. a psychopath! Now it's loading on my slow internet. So. Ugh. Well, we'll tell you. Well, that. moving on. Anyway, so I, uh, I'll i tell you what I gave. I, I just said it was a push because I don't know yet. Until I see the campaign roll out, I don't know. On the surface, I I guess I have my reservations about Jesse. Nope. See, but technically, Rand can't have any involvement with his PAC. So I don't no, think he. Technically, he can't. I mean, although he probably does influence the decision, probably well, in reality. Yeah, too, I mean, but. well, look, they so have to, they he have to endorse him, but, the message. So or, clearly, yeah. you know. Clearly, he has the implicit endorsement of Rand Paul to to run this. Yeah, thing. of course. I mean, so even though they're not allowed to like talk on the phone or whatever those ca- campaign ha- whatever rules are. the rules are, yeah. But I don't know. It's it just. I think they're limited to three Facebook IMs per week. That's it, and that one text right. message. But it has yeah. to be only emoticons. Right. You have to decode it. Uh, anyway, what's your take on that? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not a Jesse Benton fan. I think Tom Woods has suggested that he must have uh, something on Rand Paul or Ron Paul. He doesn't know why they still involve him in their political campaigns. Mm-hmm. So um, I just think that, you know, the Pauls seem like they can be loyal to a fault sometimes. And maybe that's good. Maybe that's bad. I don't know. Maybe just running the pack they see as a harmless thing. Like, he'll not really be running it. He'll just kind of, like, have an office and, uh, you know, they'll bring some, some other guys to make some cool ads. And I don't know. Hopefully he just, hopefully he just sticks his nose out of uh, everything. What was that thing he said? He was holding his nose to work for McConnell? He was holding his nose when he worked for McConnell, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, hopefully that was great. true. Yeah. Hey, there are all, there are all these pictures of him and like McConnell doing a holding their nose thing online too, like making fun, like mocking it, like, hey, yeah. we're we're good, it's fine. <laughs> oh, you gave it, you only gave it a push. I'll give it a minus because Jesse Benton sucks. Yeah, yeah. well, like I said, I'm, I I'm give more, it a push because I want to. I want to see what actually comes of it first. You know, it's just I don't like the pushes. You need to be more harsh. Oh, I like the you push. Be more aggressive, like salt and pepper. All right, and uh, we'll just talk about this last one because I know you uh, you're a little fired up about it. So why don't you tell us about? I'm this, a little uh, fired up. Yeah, I got an email. I'm, yeah, I'm on the email list for Rand. So I got a an email today about Rand saying, "Oh, you know, we got to stand up for this, and I want you to to write your senators and support this. What it's called is the Life at Conception Act S five eight three, and he's using the Fourteenth Amendment to make his case that. Essentially, life begins at conception, as you might have gotten for the bill's name, and that, um, in my opinion, this is circumventing Roe versus Wade. Now, let me read to you what is uh, in this statement. 
from the 14th Amendment, Section 1, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Now, Rand uses that to then say the Life Conception Act legislatively declares what most Americans believe and what science has long known, that human life begins at the moment of conception and therefore is entitled to legal protection from that point forward. The right to life is guaranteed to all Americans in the Declaration of Independence, ensuring that it is upheld. Ensuring this is upheld is the constitutional duty of all members of Congress. Boy, that's long. That is lengthy. Uh, so, essentially, again, Brand is saying, "Look, ladies, uh, tough noogies. If you get knocked up and one single cell is in your body, that is now life, and you are not allowed to get an abortion because that would violate the rights and liberties of the fetus inside of you." Of course, this opens up. A entire smorgasbord of issues, and uh, I personally think it's an overreach. Uh, again, this is where we were talking about before how religion influences governance. This is a pure and simple case of that. Clearly, Rand believes that life begins at conception, uh, despite the fact that I personally well, don't believe. Well, technically, if we're talking about where life begins, mm-hmm. that is where it begins. Whether or not you think well, that's a life senti- that, yeah, exactly. that is a full human and has the same rights or not. It certainly is beginning then. Right. You're attaching... But you know that this is meant to mean full, you're a full human. Right. Exactly. That you're a full human. That you know, th- This basically just comes back to the argument about whether or not there's a soul, which in my opinion is not the realm of government necessarily to say when a soul is you know, is active and when we can say right. it's a, a human. How can government ever decide what day? I mean... Nobody thinks that a baby should be killed the day it's out. Well, you should. I, well, actually, scientifically, you think you should be able to monitor that by brain function. In my opinion, is how you could determine whether or not there's actually something going on there. You could determine brain function, whether there's cognitive reasoning or cognitive thinking going on within the within the brain and the neurons. So that, in my opinion, would dictate. Okay, there is now life uh, on this level. This is a person now, and not just a, a bundle of cells. So that's that's it to me. But again, this just it's going to catch him. A lot of flack. I don't think that he should be introducing it. I think it's an overreach on his part that it should not be uh, something that's banned at the federal level. And it should be state by state the way it is currently, uh, which is the way his father looked at it. If you recall, Ron said that he personally believed that uh, life began a conception, that he was against abortions, except in certain extreme situations. And um, but it was up to the states. And I don't think that Rand should be taking this leap. It's not one of those things, too. It doesn't seem like it's politically feasible in reality, and therefore, what good is it really going to do him, politically speaking? Well, it's going to really get him in good with the religious right. Well, yeah, right. At, at the same time, upsetting the exactly. many other people that he supposedly is, and it is in many ways, effectively reaching out to. And that is the great conundrum of Rand Paul. He is so, so good on so many things and does so many things to bring people in from all sorts of sides of the political spectrum. And at the same time, he does some things that are guaranteed to alienate those same people. So uh, it's he's. I, I would agree with Time Magazine when they say he's the most interesting politician because he certainly is the most interesting. He's he's a guy. How can somebody, you know, get that much praise and scorn from the same types of people from the from the same libertarian audience? I mean, it's yeah. it's very incredible. And then then you get the you get religious right people that love him and hate him, and then you get the far left that loves him on on the drug war or should anyway, and then they hate him on other stuff. It's just uh, it's very interesting how it's going to all shake out. But that's why you're here each and every week yeah. with Rand Paul Wesses and Minuses Rand Paul Wesses and Minuses that's right helping you guys weigh the benefits and the drawbacks of liking voting for or just sitting back and enjoying a picture of Dr. and Senator Rand Paul all right, and as we mentioned, you can find that every single Tuesday at lionsofliberty.com. That's Rand Paul Lusses and Minas. This is the podcast version of that show, we, which we will do every whenever, basically. That, that's the schedule for that. Probably every four to six weeks or so, whenever, whenever it feels just right, which it does, certainly this week with Rand announcing for president. And yeah, we're going to keep it. And it's not just Rand we're going to be keeping an eye on, folks. 
keep coming back to lionsofliberty.com because we're going to be taking a look at every single human being that announces for president. I mean every single one. we got Rand Paul so far. Obviously, we look at him every week. We've got Ted Cruz. We'll have a feature up on him pretty soon. And everybody, not just Republicans, any Democrat that announces, Libertarians, Vermin Supreme. Remember that guy? If he runs again, we will profile him too. So keep coming back to lionsofliberty.com where we will look at all these guys through the spectrum of liberty. And until next week, Brian, do you have any final words before I just cut you off and tell everyone that what I need them to do? That's all right. I like it. That's you a good way them. to end the show. Until next week, folks, live long and live free. One sentence earlier, Rand Paul. One sentence. One sentence earlier, Rand Paul. One sentence earlier, Rand Paul. One book earlier, Rand Paul. <laughs> Good night. Lines of Liberty dot com slash house. 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 Hey guys, it's Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar! That's right, every Monday to Friday we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media, or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at LionsOfLiberty.com, advancing the ideas of liberty daily. Slash house, lines of liberty, dot com, slash.